Hello and welcome back to How About That Crypto. You are watching your daily crypto news and updates with your host, Bitcoin Stylist on Twitter and Bitcoin Hairstylist on Instagram. I am here Monday through Friday and I explain crypto and Web3 while keeping you up to date on all the latest. Today's news stories are big time Wall Street banker types are changing their tone about crypto and even admitting when they were wrong. This is crazy. Who are they? What are they saying? And why is this important? And famous soccer player Lionel Messi goes big on crypto. He is the latest sports personality to enter the space. And if you stay till the end, I will discuss my thoughts on where price is going in the near term as well as in the medium term, because you know what I think about the long term. You do not want to miss this. So, but first, if you like or don't like the content, please let me know by leaving a comment below. If you're listening on podcasts, please give me five stars and follow me. If you're watching on YouTube, please smash the subscribe button, ring the bell. It helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. Just to be clear and litigious, this is not financial advice. You can use the links below to do your own research. My prayers continue to go out to the Ukrainian people and all those affected by this war. Hopefully this is over sooner than later. I have a public service announcement or really just a audience service announcement. If you feel like this stuff that I'm talking about is too confusing, just keep listening. I know that it's hard sometimes. A lot of people will tell me like, oh, I just kind of glaze over. Um, after say a week or two weeks of listening daily, if you still feel like you're having trouble understand, please reach out to me. You can send me an email at listen at howaboutthatcrypto.com. And I am more than happy to kind of dive in. I'd like to hear your feedback. If you don't want to leave a comment below, please email me. All right. So the war continues and Russia is telling unfriendly nations to pay for their gas in rubles or gold. Slovakia is the first EU nation that, have, that I have seen publicly say they would pay for gas in rubles. Germany is telling the rest of the EU to F off. We need gas. So we're not going to stop buying from Russia. But they told Russia they won't pay in rubles. What does all of this mean? Well, I think it means energy prices are going to go, are going to continue to rise. But what does this do to currency? Well, I have some thoughts. What do you think? I'm not sure if this stuff has to do with the recent change in tone on Wall Street, but some of the biggest naysayers of crypto. Sorry, I am not sure if this stuff has if this stuff has anything to do with the recent change in tone on Wall Street by some of the biggest naysayers in crypto. I personally have a Mount Rushmore of crypto haters. They are Elizabeth Warren, Jamie Dimon, Gary Gensler, and Janet Yellen. This list contains, in order, a U.S. Senator, a CEO of the largest investment bank in the world, the SEC Chairman, and the U.S. Treasury, Treasury Secretary. I reported last week that the U.S. Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, had changed her tone, so she sits at the bottom of this list. I'm still keeping an eye on her, because you never know. I suppose I forgot one person, CEO of Citadel Securities. Citadel Securities settles over 25% of all stock trades in the U.S., this means that more than one out of every four stock tra stocks traded on, on the market flow through this company. He has the ear of all the top bankers in the world. U.S. Congress is talking with him. He also communicates with other heads of state. Yes, he is a big deal. He went on the road after the Robin Hood and GameStop situation, you know, the big crazy thing where a bunch of normal people trading on their phones in their basements caused the hedge fund to go under. It made news and there were congressional hearings about it. Anyways, King Griffin went on the road and called crypto a jihadist movement against the dollar. Woo, pretty hardcore if you ask me. Well, do I have something for you? I'm so happy that I get to share this with you this morning. So uh, if you're listening on podcasts, just listen up. Um, I'm going to play a video clip. And if you want to see the clip for yourself because you don't believe it, uh, you can use the link below to check it out. But um, otherwise, check this out. This is um, David Rubenstein interviews King, King Griffin on Bloomberg. Uh, it's, a, it's actually a pretty good article. You get to know who this person is and what, what he's thinking. And uh, it's 46 minutes long, but starting at minute 16, check this out. Now, the other partner that you sold a stake to was Paradigm, which is a cryptocurrency related investor. Uh, you haven't been trading, I think, or making markets in crypto. Uh, do you expect to do that in the future? So crypto has been one of the great, great stories in finance over the course of roughly the last 15 years. And, 
And I'll be clear, I've been in the, in the naysayer camp over that 15 year period of time. But the crypto markets today have a market capitalization of about $2 trillion in round numbers, which tells you that I haven't been right on this call over the course of the last 15 years. I still have my skepticism, but there are hundreds of millions of people in this world today who disagree with that. And so to the extent that we're trying to help institutions and investors solve their portfolio allocation problems, we have to give serious consideration to being a market maker in crypto. And I think it's fair to assume that over the months to come, you will see us engage in making markets for cryptocurrencies. What? This... <laughs> okay. I, it's so hard for me to like explain how exciting this was for me to listen to. We were like headed out of the house to get to get to church. And uh, my wife was like, we got to go. And I was like, hold up. He said something about crypto. I got to rewind this thing. And uh, yes, Ken Griffin, major market maker, meaning that they help settle trades. They find a buyer and a seller and match them together. And uh, this is a really big deal. The industry relies on market making. And um, there's been some talk at the SEC about looking at some rules around crypto exchanges, being able to be market makers and uh, and be listing these these uh, tokens. Um, <clears throat> basically, this guy who settles tw one in four stock trades in the U.S. market and has the ears of everybody important in the in the realm of banking and lawmaking, he is now getting into crypto. This is massive. What do you think? Do you think that this is a joke and this doesn't matter? Do you, uh, if you think this is a big deal? Do you not understand why this is a big deal? Please leave a comment below. I want to hear from you. Uh, next up is Mount Rushmore crypto hater number two, Jamie Dimon. All right. So I want you to listen to Jamie Dimon in his most recent appearance. So check this out. This whole discussion today about Bitcoins and digital currencies and so on. How do you see when there becomes a shadow system where you have, like you said before, and I totally agree with your assessment that the governments would try to stop the currency being a Bitcoin currency, but be a, a technology, but there would be entrepreneurs who would kind of run a shadow economy system based on Bitcoin. So how would you see that play it's out? Not, it's just not going to happen. I mean, you're wasting your time. So you when think they can When the DOJ it? calls someone up and says that's an illegal currency and it's against the laws of the United States of land, if you do it again, we'll put you in jail. It's over. So you really There's think... No Oh, technical difficulty. Sorry. There's no issue. There will be, this is my personal opinion, there will be no real non-controlled currency in the world. The, you know, there's no government that's going to put up with it for long. Anybody? The, it, it's kind of cute now. You know, a lot of the senators in Congress will say, I support Silicon Valley innovation. There will be no currency that gets around government control. Anybody here want to take a, 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 an opposite view? <laughs> the, 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 the technology will be used. It may even be used to transport currency, but it will be U.S. dollars. But digital, right. but, but the right, digital currency will be stopped. Yes. A, a virtual currency, where it's called a Bitcoin as opposed to a U.S. dollar. These things may be very well for cheap transfers of money. Okay. Wow. He is uh, definitely not a fan of Bitcoin. And... Uh, the whole idea of cryptocurrency replacing fiat currency, meaning the U.S. dollar or the British pound uh, or the euro, uh, he is like, no, that's a that's a joke. That is a big joke. Well, super aggressive. He obviously does not like Bitcoin. He says that there will be no new currency. But if you have been listening to my channel, you would know that I don't even believe that Bitcoin is good for a currency. I'm in the camp that does not believe that. I think it is a reserve asset, not a reserve currency. What's the difference? I believe making, I believe having in my portfolio helps shield me from inflation and currency debasement. Maybe those two are the same things, but basically like what I see is if I like, it's like gold to me, it's like gold, but it's digital and it's truly finite gold. They can, when gold prices go up, gold miners ramp up production and increase the supply of gold. So it's kind of similar to the dollars that bankers create more dollars. 
Now, is there a limited amount of gold? Supposedly, but like we keep finding more gold and but you can't find more Bitcoin. So I like it because it's a scarce asset. This, of course, is not financial advice. I would like someone to ask him what he thought about this perspective. What about looking at Bitcoin as property, as a hedge of uh, inflation hedge and gold? Like, is it possible that we get to a point where banks and central banks around the world have Bitcoin on their balance sheet to help secure their national currency? That's kind of where I see it going. Bitcoin maximalists, people who think Bitcoin is the ultimate, uh, you know, reserve, ultimate currency, the pe money's, the people's money. I understand that if you disagree with me, please leave a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. And I am moving on. So he does have some things. Uh, Jamie Dimon has some other things to say about crypto. I want to read some excerpts for me for you. In his annual shareholder letter, Diamond wrote that decentralized finance, DeFi, and blockchain are real, new technologies that can be deployed in both public and private fashion, permissioned or not. The blockchain is a public digital ledger that documents cryptocurrency transactions and stores other information. It powers cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum, along with decentralized applications, including DeFi platforms and non-fungible tokens. So Diamond saying decentralized finance and blockchain are real. Decentralized finance, as in the ability to trade, sell, borrow, and lend without the banks. And he says it's the new technology can be deployed in both public and private fashion, whether it's permission or not, meaning whether it's decentralized or it's run like JP Morgan. So JP Morgan has their own JPM coin. They use that to settle payments and move US dollar deposits around from the different banks and overseas. It reduces their costs. Uh, I have a quote here. This is from Jamie Dimon. We believe there are many uses where a blockchain can replace or improve contracts, data ownership, and other enhancements. Our clients are adults. They disagree with me. I added the with me part. That's what makes markets, Dimon said in October. So if they want to have access to buy yourself Bitcoin, we cannot custody it, but we can give them legitimate as clean as possible access. They cannot custody it because there are all kinds of regulations and capital controls and uh, the way the accounting, the accounting methods are seen at the SEC, like the banks have to have a certain amount of money and each different type of money, whether it's a mortgage backed security or cash or bonds or stocks, each one has a different weight in, in a when they calculate what the total net worth is or what their total balance sheet is worth. And Bitcoin is not, is not, is not friendly to that balance sheet. So the banks can't really afford to hold the Bitcoin. Plus there's some concerns over custody. So all that stuff is being figured out. The question is when those things are figured out, is he gonna be able to custody at his bank? If you know more than me, please leave a comment below. Correct me if I have any, any of this inaccuracy. I'm not being accurate about this. So anyways, this news is not as exciting as the crypto world is making it out to be, in my opinion, but I think it is good news nonetheless. I still have my question about Bitcoin as property or gold. I'd love to hear from them. Fed chairman Jay Money said Bitcoin is more likely is more like gold than a currency in public statements. I wonder how Jamie feels. Nonetheless, value in DeFi and crypto is seen by one of the biggest crypto haters out there. This is great news for the crypto market, in my opinion. What are your thoughts? Do you agree? You disagree? Please leave a comment below. Moving on. All right. All you soccer fans or football in other countries. Uh, famous soccer player Lionel Messi gets into crypto. A Reuters report on ESPN titled Lionel Messi signs $20 million deal with crypto firm Socios to promote digital fan tokens. I want to read a couple paragraphs here. Lionel Messi has signed an agreement worth more than $20 million to promote digital fan token company Socios.com, a source close to the deal told Reuters on Tuesday. Messi becomes the latest global sports personality to enter the crypto world following Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback Tom Brady and Los Angeles Lakers star LeBron James. Messi... Messi's deal also comes amid a growing wave of tie-ups between crypto firms and football. So I think this is fascinating. And um, so basically like really do like, what is socios? 
So let's look at what Socios is. All right. Introducing fan tokens. Socios creates fan tokens and they and they describe it here is this one says own a share of influence of your team. So you can basically vote on things. So right, I'll just kind of like click on this and uh, scroll down. So you can see all these are all the teams. They said that there's like 130 uh, organizations, football teams or soccer teams that uh, they're already signed up. So if I you scroll way down here, what are fan tokens? Fan tokens are finite digital asset minted in limited numbers with ownership logged in a secure ledger on the Ethereum blockchain. So basically each soccer club issues a, a finite, like a, a, a certain number of tokens. These are cryptocurrencies. They, you can trade them, but by holding them, you, holding your token by, if you buy it, it gives you lifetime access to exclusive fan clubs with VIP rewards, promotions, games, and access to an inner circle of super fans. Fan tokens also give you the right to influence team decisions and other perks like signed gear reserved for token holders. So I looked into like, what are the different types of um, voting? And it'll be like, oh, we're going to change the colors. We're going to change the outfit, the uh, uniforms. We're going to put like an armband. And what should the message of the armband say? So people are actually able to engage and influence their their team. Many professional football clubs have already partnered with Socius to create fan tokens offering. And okay, so let's go back to this article. Uh I want you to read. I want to read this more. Dive a little bit more into what is Socios. Here we go. And let's see where is it. Okay, Socios has Socios have signed deals, including creating tokens for more than 130 sports organizations, including a number of football clubs such as PSG, Barca, Juventus, and Manchester City. I don't know what any of that means, but I guess it's a big deal. You soccer fans would know better than me. Fans deserve to be recognized for their support. They deserve opportunities to influence the teams they love, Messi said in the statement. So anybody who doesn't care about soccer, soccer I'm pretty sure is the most, most popular uh, sport in the world a quote based on fan base so this is a really big deal uh, so basically these organizations it says tokens are increasingly seen by clubs as a source of new revenue but have been criticized by some supporters supporters groups who see their introduction as superficial participation that adds to the already growing cost of following their teams i'm not really sure what they mean by that growing cost of following their teams you don't have to buy these crypto tokens but if you want to get more at greater access to your team if just watching it on tv or going to the games isn't enough buying hats and and wearing jerseys isn't enough if you want more because you just love soccer so much which there are so many people who are big time fans now you can buy crypto that's issued by your favorite team and you can have a say and you can even invest in that team. I'm sure the more popular the team is, the more successful the token would be, I'm assuming. So it's almost a way to invest in a club. And um, so anyway, this is not financial advice. If you want to read more about it, you can use the links below to do your own research. Um, leave me your thoughts and your comments below. All right. So you made it to the end. Well, Let's talk the state of things. Bitcoin and crypto have been seeing great momentum right now. Things look like they slid back a little bit, uh, but we are seeing a recovery. So at the beginning of the year, people, uh, the crypto market really tanked. And the last few weeks, we've seen a real run up. Uh, I don't think this makes a lot of sense from a big macro perspective, considering the war and uh, energy costs, um, maybe because of inflation. But Do Kwan, who's, from, who's the founder of Terra Luna, announced he is buying hundreds of millions of dollars with the Bitcoin every week to create a reserve asset for the stablecoin UST. It's a long story, but this seems to be the only thing that can be pumping price. I wish it was because of all the amazing things that I report to you about Monday through Friday. However, the situation in Ukraine and with energy, I think is going to hurt markets a lot. I don't think that we've really seen a big dip. And I do think one is coming, including crypto. I foresee after the markets absorb this dip, then we will see a big crypto rally. Hopefully this, be, be, this will be by the end of the year, but I don't know. I'm in it for the long haul. Are you? 
you know, what are your comments? Uh, what are your thoughts about this? What do you, do you like this prediction? Do you not? This is not financial advice. This is just my opinion. And, um, please leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. I uh, would love to hear from you. If you're listening on podcast, please give me five stars and like if you like and follow. If you're watching on, on YouTube, please subscribe and ring the bell. It helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. And I will talk to you all tomorrow. Hot along.